Hello there again, everybody. Boyd here with you. Well, before we get going on this video, I just want to say a shout out and a thank you to everybody that responded on our 10 year anniversary video. That really meant a lot to me and I really appreciate all the support you guys. And uh, it's really great to know that a lot of people out there have been inspired from the channel and have either gotten back into the hobby or just gotten started. That's really the main reason I started my channel in the first place. So it's really great to see. So let's hope we can go 10 and maybe beyond that. I'm hoping for the best. Um, let's kick off the next 10 years with a really nice build here. This is the uh, MPC 22-inch Eagle kit. A lot of you guys out there have been waiting for this one. I'm finally getting a chance to build it. I've kind of put this one back for a while because it's, uh, it's just a really awesome kit, and it's probably going to turn into one of my favorite models when it's done. I really want to do a nice job on this, and I've been gathering up a few things for it, some paint, and we've got some aftermarket decals here for it. I'll give you a look at the box art here on the back. This is a uh, awesome kit. I got a chance to see a couple of these at a couple model shows, you know, and I was really impressed with how the model looked when it was finished. Of course, it's big and everything, but the detail is outstanding. It's just a huge upgrade from the original MPC kit from back in the day. This is a dream kit for a kid that grew up in the 70s, um, like I did, and uh, we always, you know, dreamed about having a model like this, so I'm going to try to do a really nice job on it. We're going to do a little bit of lighting on it. We're going to light up the cockpit and probably the uh, cargo container, the windows on that. I don't know if I'm going to light the engines or not, but uh, I may decide to. We'll see as we go along. Um, but um, we'll just talk about real quick about what we're going to do here today. We're going to get started, uh, you know, getting some of the basic parts of the kit prepared, uh, maybe get some of the parts in primer and things like that, and I'll talk about what I'm running into as I go along with the build like I usually do. Um, here is the just, recent, or just recently released um, aftermarket decal set from round two. I got this from Jerry at HD Model Works. He was kind enough to send this over to me to uh, have me try it out. So really appreciate that again, Jerry. This is a really beautiful set. You can see you got all kinds of markings in here uh, for doing some of the actual you know paneling detail that you'd normally have to paint on. I'm really a big fan of using decals whenever possible. I know, um, you know, you guys have seen me do all kinds of complex painting here, like on the, you know, the refit, the Katinga. So, you know, we're capable of doing that here. But, you know, I'm a big believer that the, the, the technology with decals has gotten so much better these days. And, uh, you know, with some of the recent builds I've done where you've got to basically wrap the entire model with decals. And if you do a nice job on it and use the proper kind of sealer and everything, you really can't tell the difference that they're not painted on. So I'm all about saving time and materials and all that. And if you get the same basic result when you're done, that's the way I'm going to go every time. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's fun to do painting. If I ever do another Enterprise refit, I'll definitely be using the, uh, the new masks that are out there from Mask Design. You know, there's some beautiful stuff out there, and I'll be using the iridescent paints. But uh, when there's stuff like this available, you know, I'll definitely give it a try. But uh, you'll be seeing more of this down the line a little bit. So let's kick, let's kick things off here, guys. I'll uh, take some of these parts out of, the, out of the kit and off the sprues, start getting things cleaned up, and we'll move over to the bench and uh, get going on this wonderful model kit. I'm really excited to get started on it. I'll be right back and show you where we're at, everybody. All right, everybody, I'm back with you and off to a start on the Eagle build. Uh, the instructions here call for you to start on the forward area uh, of the cockpit, but I decided to work on the um, spine area here first, kind of the backbone of the model. Um, this has a lot of intricate little kind of frame pieces that you have to put together, and it's kind of critical that this is all nice and square. So what I decided to do is start with building this. You start off with four pieces here. These are actually split in half. You can kind of see the seam right there where they go together. So I pulled these off the sprue and I started looking at them close. And you could notice that um, on the uh, mainly on the upper and lower main rails of these, there was sort of a um, you know an, an edge there or like a step, like we like to call it, where the two halves were molded together and it ran all the way across on the top and the bottom on all four of these parts. So I took my uh, hobby knife here and I just basically went along and scraped all that off, got it leveled off and the little areas I couldn't get to, I worked with, with uh, sandpaper to get that all cleaned up. 
Also, I want to show you here that uh, on all four of these parts, I noticed that on the outer edge, which is kind of funny because that's the side you're going to see mostly, um, we had some cavities here in the mold. I'm not sure if this is going to be the same on all the kits, but uh, on mine, uh, you can see that they didn't inject enough plastic in there, and it left uh, that kind of little dimple there all the way around. And so I used a little bit of my perfect plastic putty here and just dabbed that on there with a Q-tip and wiped it off with water, the excess, so I didn't have to sand very much and clean them up on this side. So I'm, I haven't done this side yet here because I wanted to show you what it looked like, but that's an easy fix. Also, you've got this little joint right here where the uh, two halves go together. I've already puttied that up on this side. A little bit more work to do there, but get that all smoothed out and cleaned up. And then we've got a bunch of these small little intricate little framework pieces that need to go in here and connect all this together. Um, I'm working on my flat, you know, ceramic tile here because this has to be really nice and square. So that's my uh, whole idea of getting started with this part. I want to get all these pieces put together and then uh, I'll tape it down on here where I know it's nice and flat and everything. And that way it'll have a good chance to dry up and be nice and solid. And we can work with that later on because all the main parts need to attach onto that. And it's critical that this is all nice and straight. So just to go over that little kind of prep detail, you want to clean these parts all up before you put it all together and then notice it because it's going to be a lot harder to work on then. So I got this all ready to go. I'll finish up uh, filling in all these little pits that I talked about, clean this all up and get the rest of the uh, framework assembled. And I'll come back and show you what that looks like. And I'll talk about some of the things I had to do to line everything up. And then we'll go from there. Be right back, everybody. Okay, everybody, I'm back with you once more. And it took me a couple of hours here to get this all put together, but the spine turned out pretty good. Uh, we got all our little uh, segments in place here. I worked on it on this nice flat surface here, so we got it all nice and square and everything. And um, I'm going to let this uh, dry for a little while. We're going to go over next, and we're going to prime it. We're going to put some black on this for some pre-shading, and then we're going to spray this with our, uh, our white color, which is going to be our Folk Art Wicker White. I'll show you the paint here in just a little bit. Just to talk about real quick real quick about what it took to get it together um, I had to basically sand and clean up every single one of these uh, little crossbars here on the top and the bottom as I talked about on the the first segment here with these main spine pieces we had like a little uh, a step on there you know a little a little line on the on the top and the bottom of each one of these so I had to sand that down and then of course um, you know remove all the burrs and everything and then the best method I found for me, these have you know a certain angle that they have to go. You can you can tell when you put them in. I start off by gluing the end ones on first, and then getting this thing all squared up, putting the big ones on the bottom on. You'll see that on the instructions. Uh, and then I just start putting all these little small ones, and I start from the middle and work my way out. And um, when you put them in the little slot here on the top, they fit in the little circle, and uh, they fit in the little sockets there. So I would just take my finger and kind of spin it until it kind of seated in there and you could see it you know the uh, the angle that's that's matches on the end to the outer part of the tube here you'll you'll see what I'm talking about when you try it yourself and once I got it in that position then I went ahead and just you know took my my glue and just drizzled a little bit in there on each one on the top and the bottom the bottom ones here have a slot and they kind of go straight down and sit and they can only go one way so you can figure that out pretty quick but um, we've got all of our putty work done on this now. Everything's ready to go. So uh, we'll take you over here and we'll do a little bit of painting on this. And then we'll uh, call this first part of the video, the first part of the build series, a wrap here. I'll be right back with the paint work. Okay, moving right along, everybody. I've uh, finished up prepping and painting the, uh, the spine part of the model here after we finished that assembly. And once I got primer on it, I looked it over again and everything looks nice and smooth and everything glued together really nice it's nice and square and ready to go so I just used a little bit of my Duplicolor gray primer primed it and then I painted over that with some uh, cheap 99 cent a can flat black here just to get the uh, black on there for our shading this gives a really nice effect if you spray over the top of that with a light color because you get some nice kinda you know shadows in the little gap areas and stuff and it gives it a little bit more scale and realism so this will work out really good for this particular model the color I chose for the uh, hull, if you want to call it the hull, or the, you know, the main color of the model is this um, Folk Art Wicker White. I used this exact same color on the Enterprise E I did a little while ago. One thing I noticed when I look at a lot of the sci-fi models that were made, that were done in shades of gray and shades of white, 
they always seem to have a slight little bit of a tannish uh, tint over the top like you know some people mistake it for weathering but what it actually is is if you look really close after you do some white um, paint jobs with you know your flat white on some of your starships and some of the other models I've done here uh, whenever I dust over the top of those with some flat um, clear coat that gives it that sort of tannish kind of uh, you know it gives it a little bit of a it's hard to describe but you can see what I'm talking about and a lot of a lot of people think it's a you know coat of tan really light lightly dusted that's been put on there to give it some kind of a weathered or scale look but the actual you know I noticed the more coats of um, that that I put on it'll turn you know a little bit darker it's not an overwhelming tan it just gives a kind of a different shade to the regular white that you put on there and looking at the pictures of the um, the original eagle props that's exactly what they look like they look like they had been heavily you know doused with a uh, dull coat so this should work out pretty good so um, working with this as I've uh, talked about before this you know water-based craft acrylic paint it's a little bit finicky. It takes a little while to get used to spraying it, but once you get used to it and you, you're willing to put up with the little extra things you have to do to make it work, it actually works really good. Um, the thing that I want to say is really important with this is that you have to thin it down. People ask me all the time how much I'm thinning it down. Well, what I'm using here for my thinning ratio may not work for you because it's really based on your airbrush and how big the needle is in it or your little air gun, whatever you're going to use. Um, and you basically want to make it, you, you want to reduce it to where it's as thick as it possibly can be that your that your airbrush or gun will still spray it properly without splattering or getting clogged. The thicker you can mix it, uh, the better it'll cover and and all that kind of stuff. That's the one issue with uh, this water-based paint. It it definitely doesn't cover as good as the uh, the other type paints because that could be you know with a solvent-based paint you can run it a little bit thicker and um, it won't clog the uh, the airbrush up. But the other thing that I do every time like a religion with this stuff is I um, I'll thin it down, get it where I like it, and then I'll uh, pour it from one cup to another and use, you know, a really fine um, paint strainer and, and definitely strain it because I'm finding that, you know, brand new bottles of this stuff have little chunks and little, you know, debris in there that uh, it doesn't take much to clog up your airbrush. So I do that every time too and it seems to work pretty well. Now I've gotten used to this and, you know, I like to force dry everything. So with my uh, water-based paint using the airbrush, I try to you know put kind of like light coats on there and um, you know dry them in between and then kind of build it up and it'll usually take two or three times of doing that until I get the desired coating that I want so you know a little bit more patience you have to have with this type of a paint but for the price you can't beat it and they really have just a massive selection of colors at my local um, Hobby Lobby and Michaels they have a massive amount of colors of this stuff everything from metallics to uh, you know color changing and everything in between. The only thing they really don't have in water-based is the really good, you know, metallic like chrome effect and aluminum effect paints. You still have to use uh, solvent-based for that type of stuff. But enough rattling on about the paint. I've got it all mixed up like I talked about, all thinned out, all strained and everything and set up in my airbrush here. So we're just going to start dusting this on. I just like to just, you know, work my way across and get a feel for how heavy it's going on you know and I'll just kind of take it easy you don't want to get runs so that's another part about being patient with this stuff you just have to kind of go really slow but like I said this this effect here will be really nice because we're going to get some nice um, you know shadowing and everything in there with the uh, pre-shading that we did with the black so this will look really good just kind of trying to get in all the little nooks and crannies here I was going to use my big gun for this, but I wanted to kind of be more gradual putting the paint on with this airbrush because I want to keep some of this uh, pre-shading like I talked about. And um, I think we'll stop there for now. And we'll let this dry. I'll probably do this two or three times. Of course, I'll have to turn it over and do the bottom side, but you guys get the general idea. I'll finish this up and come back and show you what it looks like. And then we're going to call this video a wrap. All right, you guys, we're back with you once more, and uh, mission accomplished here. We got our little spine section all finished up, all that little extra sanding and cleanup work we did uh, on these little cross braces really paid off. Everything looks nice and smooth and clean, and um, this looks like it's all one piece now. 
it uh, worked out really well for the pre-shading and everything. We've got some nice kind of shadowing going on here to give it a nice kind of scale look to it. And it's not just a stark white all, you know, all over it. Uh, we'll probably come back with a little bit of uh, Tamiya weathering ink and just kind of go around some of these joints, you know, with a really fine tip brush and just add a little bit more uh, detail onto that. But once we finish with that, we'll set this off to the side. In the next video, part two, we'll come back and we're going to be working on the... Um, the kind of the pod sections here I like to call them where the landing gear attach um, you've got a bunch of inner workings in there we're going to do the same method with the um, assembly then the black paint and then the white over the top of it to give it that nice pre-shaded look maybe do a little bit of weathering on that stuff and we'll just go from there I'm going to be saving the cockpit and the engines for last because I'm going to be doing my lighting and I have to figure out how to run all my wiring through and everything and I'll take you guys all through that don't think I'm going to light the engines. You know, they weren't lit on the show. They just had compressed air coming out of them to give a kind of a blast effect. Um, but we're definitely going to light the cockpit and the cargo container. So we've got to, you know, we got to figure out, you know, how we're going to run the wires and how to set all that up. I kind of cross those paths when I come to them. Just wanted to show you really quick. This really cool kit came into the shop uh, just the other day. This is one I've been waiting for for a while. I know you guys um, that are Space 1999 fans We'll get a kick out of this. They finally came out with a nice com lock and stun gun kit. Um, so it looks like we're going to be on some Space 1999 for a while. When I finish up the Eagle, I'm going to tackle this one. And um, my plan is to do a little bit of uh, lighting and see if we can't work some kind of lighting and sound effects into the com lock here. Don't know what I'm going to do to this point with the stun gun. If I wanted to do lighting and sound effects on that, I'd have to get a, um, a special board. There's not a lot of room to work with. You're mainly going to have to work inside the handle part here try to figure out where to put a battery and all that stuff. This one's much more open to that idea, but we'll see what we can do. We might at least put some lighting into the stun gun. That would be really easy to do with a battery and a switch and a couple of LEDs. But um, the com lock we're going to have a lot of fun with. You guys will uh, see some ideas that I have on that when we get around to it. Shouldn't be too much long. Maybe about a couple weeks we'll be done with the Eagle, then we'll start on this one. Really cool little kit, though, and... Um, there's already a bunch of out-of-the-box reviews out on this, so I won't go through that here with you, but you'll see quite a bit of it as we're building it up anyway, so you can look forward to that if you're a Space 1999 fan. So on to the next video with the Eagle, uh, probably midweek or so. I'll come back with another update on this, you guys. We'll see you next time, and take care, and happy modeling, everyone.